Um, Taj, you are the veteran leader on this team. Um, we've, we've talked over the last year and change about what your leadership means in this locker room. Can you just talk about um, maybe what you might have said at halftime to keep these guys in it? And also, um, how gassed were you uh, after that stint in the first half? Because you looked like you were a little winded. Well, um, first question. Uh, one thing about uh, when, you, when you play for a, t a TIB team is that you're going to work. You know what I'm saying? You're going to put in a lot of work. You're going you're gonna to come together. You're gonna work every day hard as you can, but along those trials and tribulations, you become a family. You become real tight knit. Uh, you believe in each other. The way Tibbs coaches, he kind of brings the whole group together, believing that it's only us. So that's kind of mindset we kind of take in. And I just, I just, I just be myself. Just be Taj, the normal Taj I've been, and then it's been working out for us. And but it's fun. We got all the young guys. We got a mixture of vets, but everybody kind of like just pieces with each other. Everybody just works together. It's just a great atmosphere here, um, and it shows when we play. And the second question: What was the second question? It was. He uh, said if you were gassed in the first half. Uh. It's the playoffs. You're going to be gassed. So that's the one thing about it. I, I pray before the game is just asking to just go out there to just play as hard as I can and then just leave everything out there on the court. Sometimes it may go in the first half. You just got to be ready around Tibbs. But whatever it takes, every game is a real dog fight. But uh, at the end of the night, we got to win and uh, recover. Mark Berman. Uh, yeah, Taj, uh, to start the second half, I mean, what what did you want to accomplish and how great did this feel to look like you guys were in a lot of trouble? Uh, well, it's a part of the game. It's a part of the game. Well, they're going to make runs. It's a dog, fa it's a dog fight. Uh, it's about all about who, 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 can swing, who can swing the longest for all the rounds. You know what I'm saying? They're going to make runs. We're going to make runs. We got to keep fighting. Uh, we just stayed poised, been in the same position all year long. Nobody believed in us. We just stayed, stayed with it, with the course. Uh, like I said, we just believe in ourselves. Just got to keep moving forward. Uh, every game is a curveball. Every game is going to be uh, a new, a new, a new set or a new uh, position. You got to just take over and understand how to play it. But luckily for us, we got 15 guys who are locked in and ready to come in and, and provide help and whatever. Whenever we, we we need it, and uh, you can tell by the way Obi and Alec, uh, those guys just was ready for the moment. Even Noel, uh, we we got a strong fifteen. Working on. Uh, Todd, what did you guys try to do differently with Trey and defending him, and how successful do you think uh, you were? Obviously, you got the win. Well, Trey is going to make him some tough shots, man. He's a, he's an all world talent. He's a young fellow with a whole bunch of talent. He, He's he's phenomenal. We're just trying to just contain him. But in the playoffs, every bucket is, is tough. He's making some tough shots, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we're just trying to match it, but at times we get some stops, but it's all about us. We just gotta focus on us, on the obvious event. But um, we gotta watch some more film and see where we can correct our errors. But that's the bright spot about it after a tough game. Especially when you win, the good sign is we can watch some film and, and correct our flaws, but knowing that the next game, game three, is going to be even harder than game two. That's the, that's the, that's the thing about playoffs. Every team is always going to – the next team is going to come out fighting even harder, and you've got to just match it up and be ready to fight. Steph Bondi. Hey, Taj, two, two questions. Um, you know, Tibbs changed up his third-quarter rotation there by putting you and Derek – in the game to start the second half, you know, what were you guys able to do to kind of throw Atlanta off a little bit and, and, and cut into that deficit? And then the second question, you know, you've been around Derek more than anybody. What, what do you make of this version of him? Um, you know, he, he even says that I'm not the same player I was, you know, when I was the MVP. What, what do you make of this version of him? Yeah, you let him gas you up if you want. <laughs> He's just being modest. He's been playing extremely well, but at the same time, uh, He's been really taking real good care of his body. Um, 
One thing about Derek I noticed is that when he's in a familiar situation and a, a familiar a situation that he's comfortable in, and he understands his family, understand that it's a good environment, winning environment, he's going to flourish whatever the situation. And right now he's just around fam, uh, familiar faces he's been in battle with for a long time. So uh, it's 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 no coincidence how he's been playing. Uh, he's just his leadership roles is on a whole other level right now as far as just talking to the young guys. But in that third quarter, I was shocked. I didn't know what to expect, but uh, Tibbs switched the lineup up. Just trying to just give some more energy, and uh, and it worked. And then right when Noel came in and the guys who switched out came in, it just kept the flow going. You know what I'm saying? We have real family here. We really believe in the 15 guys. And whoever, we nobody never pouts. Everybody understands that whatever it takes to win the game. Uh, we celebrate. We always celebrate together. We're a real team and a real family. It's a good one. Hey, Taj. Uh, I guess on that same note, the, the last time Derek had a really genuine playoff moment was that game against Cleveland when he hit the game winner. And, and you all guys were in Chicago and you were able to be there and take in that moment. What does it mean for you? You know, like how proud are you, how proud are you to see everything that he's gone through before then and since then and to be at this spot right now just because you've seen the trials and you've seen the spots where – Maybe it didn't look like he was going to be at this level at this point in his career. To be honest with y'all, always felt like he was going to be, be a consistently good basketball player. It's not even about the pop or the burst. Uh, the fundamentals are there. Left hand, right hand, you name it, he can do it. It's not even about the athleticism. Now he's like a real, he's all around. But it's not even the fact, I've been around Derek my whole career, so it's not really about I'm proud of him, like how he came out of it, because I already knew he was going to come out of that. That's just the kind of person and how he's built. He's from Chicago. But it's just the, just the, uh, the growth of it, like how he's really locked in and he's, he's really out there going full steam. There's not, there's not any kind of like, yo, take me out, anything. He's really going full steam. He's really into it. And it is a testament to his heart and a testament to growing up tough in Chicago. <laughs> what more can I say? Cassidy Hubbard. Tosh, speaking of those Chicago days, and, you know, Tibbs earlier talked about how he's kind of relying on you and Derek. Um, because you have that playoff experience um, compared to some of the younger guys who, you know, just need to get it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how much are the three of you, I, I don't even know if it's something that you guys are talking about or is this, this is an understood um, thing between you guys about leading this team um, and helping them get playoff experience, good playoff experience. Well, we don't really have to say much. We just look at each other. We've been in so many different battles. We just look at each other and just, you know, just keep it flowing. You know what I'm saying? Don't get too high, don't get too low. But the fun part about it is the young guys, man. It's so it's so fun. And even when they mess up or even when they do good, it's just, a, it's just so much energy because, uh, you know, the what the way we are, the way that we have our young guys, they're just so in tune with the game. You know, they appreciate just being out there, but they watch so much film and they are just ready to go. And uh, I think this is a great atmosphere for them. I think the playoffs is just want to make them even better. And uh, our young guys, the sky's the limit, and I'm excited for them. Last question, Rebecca Harlow. And Taj, just to kind of follow up on Cassie's point there, I know that there were times in your career with Tibbs that you guys had talked about coming back to New York and doing this thing with the Knicks. Mm -hmm. To be in that moment now, a Brooklyn kid winning your first playoff game on Madison Square Garden floor with the coach who you love the most mm -hmm. and a guy like Derek who you've been with forever. I mean, can mm -hmm. you kind of put into words what that sort of means to you? To be honest with you, I really can't. It, it's so surreal. Uh, like what I said, when I talk to the young guys who wake up and uh, they may not know where, the, where their, their path is going to lead them or where the game is going to take them, just trust your heart. Don't worry about what nobody's going to say. 
because I sat years ago as a rookie in my second year, maybe my second year, I sat every day with Tibbs after practice and we talked about the Knicks, we talked about the battles, we talked about how great it would be to play them one day. And then for it to come true, and then I'm playing with Derek, who I've been playing with my whole career, and, the, and we have the same familiar faces, but now we're in New York City. God doesn't make any mistakes, man. You just gotta follow your path. You just gotta believe in yourself, stay the course. The course is always gonna be rocky, but you just gotta stay the course and believe in yourself and and truly believe, man, because this is some, some magical stuff right now. I don't know how to explain it. It's just every day that I come in, it's just, I don't take anything for granted. But every day that I come in, it's just surreal. And you gotta pinch yourself because you're playing in the garden. It's one of the toughest places to play, but it's one of the beautifulest places to play when you're on the right, on, when, you, when you're right. And um, we're trying to do some special things here. And uh, right now we're laying on the groundwork for it. And it's, a, it's an awesome feeling.